What's up viewers, Eric from B-Sonic. Today I'm here at ACC USA with this 2015 Lexus RCF and we're going to be installing both the front camera and also the smartphone mirroring system. Since we already have a very detailed instruction on the smartphone mirroring system, we're going to be focusing on the front camera installation itself. And the part number that, we're, that is associated with the front camera is the BCAM11 and also the CS5 EP. So let's get started. Okay, the first step we're gonna do, which Shin already did, is we're gonna remove this panel on top over here. You have to open your hood first, and you'll find a lot of clips that's holding it. And once you remove all those clips, just remove this, put it aside. And Shin's also going to be fabricating a custom bracket so that we could attach it behind the front bumper and have the front camera stick out between the grill holes, just like factory. While Shin's out there fitting the front camera, let me show you what needs to be done inside of the car. So first, locate your screen. And right under the screen, you'll notice that there's a plastic panel. So we're gonna have to remove this. And then under this plastic panel, you'll find the screws that you need to unscrew in order to remove the screen, so. Okay, put this aside in a safe place. And you'll find that there's some 10 millimeter bolts, two of them. We will remove them. Okay, once those are removed, carefully place the screen down. Let's pull it out. Okay, just place it right that. And the only connector we're gonna be working on is this. So our kit comes with a harness that plugs directly into this. And this will connect into our harness. So basically you're daisy chaining it and we are gonna tuck all the the adapter behind here there's there's quite a bit of room and then we're going to fish the the harness down from here all the way down to the footwell area of the driver's seat through the firewall and connect it to the front camera so we're going to do that now okay, if you look at the adapter you'll find that there's a front cam back cam and also in the output three rca female connectors so with that, you want to first connect the output. This is the video out from this adapter. And that is going to connect to the male connector, the male side, RCA, okay? And then if you look at the back cam, the back cam is going to connect to the female side of the harness, as you can see. And the front cam here is going to connect to the front cam RCA cable that's going to come from the front bumper that's mounted all the way through the firewall, through the footwell, and wired up here. So those three RCAs, and you'll find two more connectors here. One of them is for the harness. Just make sure you fit into the connector that fits. And there's a smaller connector here that's for the, your engagement button, as you can see right here. Um, the one that comes with the CS5 EP is this teardrop one. We, you can also use the, the Toyota style one, which works for the RC and the IS series. It won't work for like the GS though. All right, so let me go ahead and do some connections. Okay, so this is how you connect it over here and we're still waiting for the front camera to come in. Um, so we're gonna leave it like this for now so we don't have to pull it all out again. Let it hang and then we'll wait for the front camera mount to be completed. So now we're going to mount the front camera here. And to do that, we need to drop this panel. There's two Phillips screws over here. So get your Phillips screwdriver and let's unscrew them. And after you pull this, all you have to do is push this, this empty slot out from the inside. It's just being held by clips. So we're going to place this camera button right here. And it'll clip on just like factory. And that wire that we routed 
is going to be connected to that. All right guys, we went and we routed the wires from the front of the car through the firewall, behind the, the foot well, all the way to behind the screen. There's space on the side where you could actually fish the wire through, that's what we did. So we had to fish both the front camera RCA wire and also the front camera power. We brought it all the way here. We went ahead and used the supplied wire tapper and tapped the front camera power to our harness that comes with the front camera interface so that you don't have to tap into your factory wire. We have all the connections in place. We tested the front camera. It's working like it should. And now we're organizing the wires. We're gonna tuck it nicely behind the screen. And then we're going to zip tie and organize the wires in the footwell. And after that, we'll be done. So pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, we just finished installing. And let me just do a really quick demonstration on our front camera system. So right now, this is on our AV mode. We also installed a smartphone mirroring, so it's mirroring my phone right now. But aside from that, you will have a new button. And when you press that button, the first time you push it, it'll take you to the front camera. So as you can see, the front camera is showing the front lip. It's angled perfectly so that you'll know exactly where to stop and not damage your lip when you're parking your vehicle and so forth. If you have a garage, you wanna know exactly where to stop, now you can stop at the exact location because of the front camera. And if you press the front camera button the second time, it'll show you your backup camera. And this can be turned on anytime. Even if you're driving, your car does not have to be put in reverse. Anytime, you press the button twice and it will show your backup camera. You press it a third time, and it'll take your car to your home screen where you left off at. And your backup camera on reverse gear will work as normal. It, this has no effect on that. And at the same time, you can also program this. So if you want the front camera to remain on only for a certain period of time, then you could program it to different time intervals. You could even get rid of your timer on it if you want it to always to stay on until you press the button again. You could do that as well. And that is all explained in the instruction manual. All right guys, well that concludes our video. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you press that subscribe button below. Thank you.